Hey, it's Arrow inside the LA Productions.us studio. First, the trailer to Gosnell. And then when we come back, we'll be unplugged and totally uncut with actor Dean Kane. All right, listen up. We are looking for anything that looks like drugs or paraphernalia. Philadelphia Police Department, we have a search warrant. What is that smell? I mean, you got to see this. Is this normal? I don't know. I've never been in an abortion clinic before. You are not going to believe what I saw last night. How many? So far, we found over 30 of them. Healthy woman goes into a clinic, comes out dead, and there's no police report? Files have been moved recently. Look at this. You'll be the prosecutor who went after reproductive rights, and you'll be a racist to boot. You've got a lot of folk who'd like to see abortion outlawed. And this is not going to be the case that gives them an excuse. Prosecution has offered you a plea bargain, Dr. Gosnell. And I would have to admit I was guilty. I'm not guilty. When you get to the courthouse, you are going to be swarmed by reporters. You ready for this, Counselor? Where is everybody? When was the last time your division inspected Dr. Gosnell's clinic? We had instructions directly from Governor Ridge's office not to inspect. Wouldn't testify in that case about anything. You doubt you'll find a doctor who will. And you look at the facts, you will see what I see. An overly zealous Catholic investigator. Back is that what you want to make this about? There's nothing that man did that protects women or children. And you don't have to be a pro-life activist to see that. Kermit Gosnell is perhaps the most prolific serial killer in American history. You better win. Good morning, Dean. How are you doing today, sir? I am fantastic, Arrow. How are you? The same way. Isn't that a great feeling, being fantastic? A lot of people look at us kind of weird, but it's a great feeling. I try to go with that every single day, and then the people always wonder why. What's, what's he smiling about? What's he so happy about? <laughs> but I got I got to change that smile for a moment because this this movie, Gosnell, the trial of America's biggest serial killer. This is a serious role for you, Mister. Yeah, no question. And, and part of what makes it so serious is that it's a true story. This yeah. took place, and um, this guy. Um, has done he did some horrific things he's a he's a monster and uh but a monster with a smile and it's a it's a really compelling story and a really compelling um film and uh i'm really just uh very very honored and happy to be a part of it what was it like for you to step into the shoes of james woody wood because i mean that's a role that you know there was some conflict there well, yeah, Woody, you know, he is like, he's a the police detective, um, and he's like so many military and first responders and police officers that we have, extremely humble, um, but extremely principled and uh, just a great guy. And he originally was a drug bust, and he was, it was a narcotics bust, and he was uh, investigating the Dr. Gosnell in his clinic for distributing narcotics illegally. And when they raided the clinic, which hadn't been inspected in 17 years for political reasons, because abortion is a dirty, dirty word, and just leave it alone and pretend it doesn't exist, um, they discovered a literal house of horrors, and they found this clinic um, and these, uh, I don't want to describe the specifics, but it was clear that he was performing late-term abortions, um, which were illegal, past 24 weeks, which is six months, which is 90% viability for a child for uh, to, uh, to live, um, and this guy was having inducing live births and killing them, right. and so Detective Wood was just determined to bring this man to justice and part of the shocking part is that nobody covered the the, the trial yep. i mean for, for 17 years if he was doing this and he may have been doing it to three or four times a day for 17 years you could do the math and it's a huge number and uh nobody wanted to cover the trial because it's just again abortion it's terrible so a lot of people haven't even heard of this story and it took place the trial took place in 2013 hmm. five years ago well, see, and, and that's my, my next question would have to be then, how do you think the public is going to handle it, knowing, A, they didn't know about it, and B, how did it happen? Why, why did it happen? Boy, those are the exact questions that I hope that everybody who goes and watches the, scene, the film asks, because uh, it, they're, they have, they'll make their own decisions. Yeah. I can't tell you why people weren't covering it. I know I would have covered it. Uh, we would have talked about it, and, and how it could have happened is just, it boggles the mind, and we're hoping that that will, that will spark those questions and those conversations, and it will, if, if it's happening anywhere else, 
here in the United States. We hope that that'll get, it'll get discovered and shut down because of what's going on with there. What was happening there is just horrific. Um, the, the children were victims. The, the, the women coming in were hor- total victims. Uh, and this man was just doing awful things. Well, one of the most haunting scenes was when you guys first entered the courtroom and there was nobody in there, especially since it was set up. It's going to be crowded. It's going to be noisy. Be prepared. And all of a sudden it's like, for what? Be prepared for what? Nobody was there. We thought it was going to be a media circus. Yep. They thought they expected yep. it's going to be mad a madhouse, and nobody covered it because the, again, why didn't they? That's the question. Is it because the, the abortion is a dirty word? I think it, that's the case. Does it not fit some people's narratives? We have a lot of journalists out there today and news media that, that certainly want to push a narrative, and maybe this didn't mess you know mesh up with it. So that's very possible as well. We want people to ask those questions, and, and maybe we'll find answers. Um, but the more eyeballs that get on this, the more people talk about it, uh, the more apt we are, I think, to find uh, an answer, to shine a light on it, and hopefully find an answer. Um, but the film isn't gory. You know? I'm glad you right. saw the film. Thank you. It's not gory at all, but you understand the emotional, um, the emotional toll that it takes on the women and, and those surrounding this situation, except for the monster himself who felt like he did nothing wrong. It's just, just shocking. Oh, I, I've done the research on him, and you're right about that darn smile of his, because it's almost like he said, what did I do? What, what, seriously, what's the problem here? It, it, there's a bit in the trailer where he just goes, and they, they said, you know, there's a plea deal here. And he said, well, that would, well, that would, would have to be, mean that I would be guilty. Right. I'm not guilty. <laughs> and he just, no possibility that he could possibly be guilty in his own mind. Um, and this is a guy who has six kids of his own, I think, you know, uh, and, and, and there's a dad and a grandfather. And it's just, it's just like, it boggles the brain. I, I understand, you know, first responders and do- doctors being, having, being able to compartmentalize, you know, some of the gory, awful things they see. But you're killing you're killing live babies. Yeah. How do you compartmentalize that? Yeah. Well, it, it, it's a murder mystery that, that, that it kind of feels like it came out of a book. But to make it a real story, all of a sudden you have to look around your own neighborhood and say, what is going on with my own doctors? Boy, if that's, uh, again, you're asking all the right questions that we hope everybody comes out and asks. And we don't take a position on the pro-life, right. pro-choice debate. We don't take a, a position at all. But those are the questions we hope people ask in their, in their own minds and in their own uh, cities and communities, because this could very well be happening in other places, because uh, as it was, they, for political reasons, he, they were told not to inspect this man's clinic. And then just things just got way out of control. And so hopefully that's not happening um, anywhere else. But if it is, you know, get out there, ask the questions, take a look. You being a part of that police department up there in Idaho, does that not scare the bejeebies out of you thinking that you could be walking (laughs) into something? Um, I've seen an awful lot of tough stuff in my day. Um, uh, So, no, it doesn't scare me in that sense. Um, I have such respect for our men and women in uniform and first responders and the stuff they have to see every day. And uh, I I certainly have always been a fan of, of... those types of folks and those people who are brave enough to, to be putting themselves out there and on the line. I, I'm aware of the things that I may see, and uh, that's part of the job, and uh, that's why I volunteered to do this, uh, because these people are out there doing it every single day, and they have my tremendous and utmost respect. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm prepared uh, you know, to see that stuff and, and try to compartmentalize it if, if, it's, if it's horrible, but... Uh, but, you know, people need protection, and, and, and our men and women uh, in, in blue, they, they do it every single day. So uh, I'm happy to stand uh, as another one in blue, and um, I'm shoulder to shoulder with them. I, I know my time is up, but I have to ask only because I love your faith-based movies. You got another one coming up real soon? <laughs> I always do. I do. I always do. It's like I have a faith-based movie and a Christmas movie every year. I just love them too. I think they're a lot of fun to to make and and uh, especially ones that don't sort of hammer you over the head with the, right. with the faith. Um, I, I enjoy that. I'm 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 Christian. I raised my son Christian, and uh, I think it's uh, those are wonderful films to tell and great morality and some stories in there and some family stories and um, feel good. And I like to be a part of that. 